Hi. So I am going to show you how to do a hidden spine. Um, refer to Gail Augustinelli and Pam from the Paper Outpost. I'm sure if you just look up hidden spine, you're going to find a lot of creators that know how to do this. But I thought I would show it here um, as I showed this earlier that I had gotten it started. So I'm going to show you how I got this hidden spine here. So let me get started. So I have a Reader's Digest book. And I have a template that I made that I can go in anytime and I can just cut my template, make my marks, punch my holes. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you how I got to this. Let's just talk about some chipboard pieces for a minute. Now, chipboard is any um, cardboard that you get from maybe a notepad, comes off a notepad. Um, I get some that come off of like the back of my um, scrapbook pads. I get them from boxes. Um, so there's many different resources that you can get them. But let's talk about the weight. So there's different kind of weights that you're looking for. And this one is the one I'm going to be using today. It's nice and flexible, but because of the process I'm going to be using for this, it, it's a nice weight um, and it's going to give me uh, more sturdiness to my book. So I'm good with it. And then these are a little bit more, they're kind of the same, but they came off of a notepad and they'd be, they'd be great. They would work fine. And then I have this one which is very very thick and it's almost too thick for what I want it for because it's I don't want to hinder the movement of the book here's another one that's pretty thick but not as it's a little bit thicker than that but not as thick so you have to decide which um basically chipboard is what we call it that you want to use and you can get these off of cereal boxes you can get them you know all the stuff that you throw away yeah um you can use that so um i just wanted to show you also sort of the the you can almost hear the thickness and you can when you bend it so this obviously is a little bit thicker and then you get to this one and it's a uh, thicker and then you get to this one and it's really thick and it's just not going to give me the movement so i'm going to get these out of the way i just wanted to show you kind of how that process went so i'm this is how i got to this and i just did my measurements and I want to go, and I can feel, I don't want to go way over to the edge, but I want a little bit of a nice snug fit in there. So I'm going to do this at one and a half. I think that will be fine. And then some people go straight to the top, but this is extra strength too. And I'm going to do um, the width or the length of this cover. So that's about, let me get it closer to me. Let's see, it's about seven and three, one eight, three eighths, seven and three eighths. So I am first going to, let me line straight. So you can just take a pencil and you can mark this and you just mark your seven and three eighths and then seven and three eighths. Um, since I have my cutting mat here, I am going to do it this way. So first I'm going to cut my seven and three eighths. Now let's talk about rulers and how you, you're going to cut this. You do not want to use your good plastic ruler. You do not want to use your good quilting rulers. Um, I have sliced into these and that's how I learned. Do not use them because I want to keep those nice for my paper when I'm um, scoring or when I'm cutting paper or fabric. I do fabric every now and then. Okay. Uh, what you want to use is a metal ruler and you can see probably maybe that I have some scratches in there. That's 
because I've gone too fast and, you know, I've scratched it. So don't use your good ruler. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to measure because these don't have eighths on them. And I want my eighths. So I'm just going to measure... I could find my pencil. So I said seven and three eighths, which I'm gonna do a tick mark over here too, just to line them up. And seven and three eighths. It's probably not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be perfect enough for me. And I'm just gonna connect those. And while I'm here, I might as well go ahead and do my width, which I think I said was, I digress, um, one and a half. So basically, it's going to be, here's one, here's the half. Let's line those up. And... I'm gonna go ahead and just get my mark in there. I might get two of them out of this, so. All right, now I'm gonna take my metal ruler and I'm gonna line this up. Now I use a finger blade. You can use scissors if you like. I don't like the cut of a scissor. I think it, it just makes it too wonky, especially the thicker paper that you get. There are some Fisker scissors that are very expensive that you can buy to cut straight through this stuff, but I'm not buying them. Um, <laughs> I'm going to use the finger blade, so any X-Acto knife, um, that type of thing is what you're going to want to use. So I'm just going to line this up. Now the pressure that you put on your blade doesn't have to be crazy. Let me make sure I'm in shot here. doesn't have to be crazy. It's the pressure that you put on here so that your um, ruler doesn't move. And I should have mentioned this has cork on the back. And you can always replace this and put more cork on the back. But this is what stops this from moving. And so I'm just going to gently start at the top. I'm not going to start in the middle. I'm just going to start running my blade through. And I'm going to do this several times until I feel it kind of the catch is right there, is gone, and there we go. And I usually do this standing up, so I probably have to slide it through a few more times because I'm doing it sitting down so I don't have a whole lot of pressure. And then again, I'm just going to, and I always start further up, and then there we go. And now I have if I've done it right, I have a piece, yay, that fits directly where I need it to fit. Okay, now I did make extra of these for the Reader's Digest books just because most of them are the same height and most of them are the same width. However, you do have to check because these, they do have different widths. Um, there, I have another one that's bigger that I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do the hidden spine, but um, anyway, you wanna you just wanna check and make sure that's gonna fit. All right, we got that out of the way. And how now did I get? How now? How now, brown cow? Um, did I get to this? So um, I'm gonna move this mat. This is my cutting mat. I got it from Dollar General for five dollars a few years ago. It has been quite a few years. I use this for using my Exacto knife. Just I know that this is that's what this is for, but I just don't want to mess it up. So I, I just prefer to use that. So I'm again. I'm gonna line up, and now I don't have a perfect. Um, it's almost perfect. Uh, on either end it's hanging off like literally I don't even know what that wouldn't even be a sixteenth of an inch but um, yeah it's very very light so I am going to try to eyeball this line to get my center because I think this is gonna have three signatures that's another thing you're gonna have to decide do I want two signatures do I want three signatures and I'll talk about that in just a minute 
So this, I want three signatures. So I'm just gonna hold that there and I'm going to get my center. My center signature is gonna go here and then just draw your line. And if you mess up, you always got another side to work with. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm not gonna be bothered with that. So now I'm going to line up, actually I'm gonna line up this way because I'm gonna use my ruler because on this awesome Tim Holtz ruler, which was a great investment, you have um, you know quarter inches, you have your eighth inches, and then you can line this up with the edge of whatever you want and kind of get the same thing on each side of your project. So what you want to do here is um, you want to find your center, number one. So I'm going to do sort of the same thing I did with the center of that one. And I'm going to go, okay, it's not going to be perfect, but I'm going to try to get it. But you can see I have a little bit on each edge. It's not quite quite there. So I'm going to just try to line it up. That looks good. And then it's going to be one, two, three, four. Here's my center right here. So I'm going to line that up and draw my line. Now, if you don't have a place, a placemat, a uh, cutting mat like this, obviously you're going to use your ruler and you're going to make your tick marks and, um, then you're gonna draw your lines. So to get my ends, I am going to go in. Now, you don't wanna go way to the edge here. You definitely wanna be further in here because when you bind your book, you don't want a chance of this hole or punch tearing out um, and it's, it just makes it look nicer. So I am going to try to get some sort of a uniformity from this line to this line. And I'm thinking, I think it's going to be, yeah, the hair looks good. So I'm just going to take my ruler and excuse my head if it's in your way, but I want to see where my line's at. Eh, do I want to go up one more? No, that'd be way too close. So this is what, like three-eighths of an inch, I think it is. And I'm going to, and I'm a perfectionist, so I'm sure like some aren't like, they're like, oh, it's, I'll just put the hole here, I'm fine. Um, I'm going to draw a line there. And that looks pretty good. I look like it looks like I'm getting an even space. So because I used the marks on this ruler, I'm going to do the same thing and get to my eighth of an inch or three eighths. No. Yeah, something like that. Not quite a quarter of an inch. It'd be one eighth, three eighths. Yeah, it'd be three eighths. And I've got pretty even spacing. I'm pretty happy with that. Now from the bottom, again, you don't want to go way down here to, to put your holes for your signatures. Um, I think I want to go up probably, let's see, I think I want to do like the seven, eight, it might be a seven, no, it's a quarter. Uh, so bad with measurements. Um, yeah, it would be seven eighths, seven eighths of an inch. And I think right here is going to be a good spot for, for my bottom holes or top, which we'll get to that. Same thing. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this end and I'm going to go up to the seven eighths of an inch. I think this is actually five eighths. I don't know, but you get the idea. Okay, and now I have, I'm pretty happy. I have what looks like pretty uniformed um, spots. 
So this is now when you're gonna want to go and write somewhere on this cardboard. I'm gonna write it on this side because this side will be the actual side that gets glued down this way. And I'm gonna write that this is the top. Because when I line these up, which I will show you to my signatures, I wanna make sure in case I'm off these eighths of an inch, that my top is gonna to be my top and my, my signatures will line up where they're supposed to. So very important to mark that. I've done that before, right? <clears throat> Have not marked it. And when I did my holes in my signature, um, yeah, not so good. <clears throat> Didn't come out good. I'd make a new one. Um, Okay, so there's a couple ways that we can punch holes in here. You can use a small hole punch, which this is what I used for this one. And then you would go along each of the lines. You can use an ice pick or you can use, this is called an awl. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, just a, I have an old book, so I don't poke into my mat and I'm going to make sure I'm in camera and I'm going to just poke down just to make that first hole. If I need it bigger, I can always go back, but I just wanna get that first initial. I did the hole punch before and I liked it, but I did this the other day and I'm like, oh, that works so much better um, because I can really get exact to where those lines are at. Ooh, that one I went up a, up a little bit, so I better do that on all of them. It'll be, it will be close enough. Okay. Okay, and then we have holes. And if we need to go back and just make them a little bit bigger, just go ahead and do that. But I think they're fine. They don't need to be huge because you're only putting a small string. Unless you use a bigger thread or something else, then yes, you're going to want them a little bit bigger. Okay, so you get the idea. Then what's going to happen is at that point, I would prep this, I'm going to prep this. Um, this will not get put in until signatures are ready to go. But I'm gonna set this aside for now, and then I'm going to prep this book. What do I mean by prep? I'm going to use um, something that actually I learned from Gail Agostinelli. I cannot find the video, but she used this one time and I thought it was brilliant. And, um, I, I like the technique, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, this is carpet tape. You can get it at any hardware. Go get you some carpet tape. And this stuff is sticky. It's also super strong, and it almost has like a Tyvek type of look to it. If you know what Tyvek is, um, you would find that in the hardware as well. Um, it, I think it's like they, it's a tape they use, I believe in drywalling. Um, but it would be almost the same consistency of a postal envelope, but one of the big ones that, um, are really, really strong. Save those cause that can be used for this as well. But I really liked this. It's really, really sticky and I just use my scissors to cut it but they get goopy too, so you can use Goo Gone to get all that sticky off. So I have already pre-cut myself a piece, and I have made it the width of the book, the um, inside of the book pages that I wanted. It doesn't have to cover the whole thing because there is going to be another step. This is just something I felt like when I saw her do it, I was like, oh, that just gives the book uh, just more, more stability on the outside of the book. And you can see this one's kind of coming apart a little bit, which I might be able to glue that. But if I want to leave the book the way it is, if I want to leave the spine, um, I'm doing that on my, my mushroom book, but I'm not quite sure I want to do it on this one. We'll see. 
I have some really pretty papers. I've also picked out papers to go in this journal already. Um, my hope and goal is to get a bunch of journal covers done so when I'm ready to rock and roll, I can just go. So that's all nice stuck and stuck in there. Now, when I pull this back, there's going to be sticky underneath as well. I'm not going to do that yet because I need to get the piece that is going to line these two sides. Um, I need to get that laid down before um, or get it ready before I pull that and lay it. So I'll be back in a few minutes and show you how to do that. So this is my box of material. This is actually an old tablecloth and um, it can be used for many different things. I've used it to make ties around my journals. I've actually stamped on it and used it as an embellishment um, or on an embellishment to enhance that. But what I really like doing with these is using them for my um, middle of the book, which you can use paper. I would use a, a good paper, don't use a cheap paper. You can use any other type of material. Now I'm going to be putting this in here. I don't care that it hangs over the edge a little bit. Um, I actually kind of like that when they're when it's kind of peeking out and fraying. I think it's kind of cool. Um, and I'm not I'm not sure I want it quite this far over um, into the pages. So I think I want to break that down a little bit so that it goes maybe about this far in. It's probably going to be covered anyway, but I'm just going to go ahead and snip, and I'm sure you've seen this a hundred times, and rip. Snip and rip. And then I think that's probably going to be the size that I want. And let's see. Yep. And then I need to do the same thing here. And as you can see, I'm not really measuring. I mean, I have so much of this stuff. Even if I messed it up, I could just get another one. It's not that big of a deal. And I am coming straight to the edge because I, I like it when it peeks out over the top. I think it's just kind of adds something to the journal. So again, I'm going to just snip and rip. Okay. And of course, you're going to get all these little pieces that come flying out at you. Not a big deal. And then here is my piece that's going to go in the middle. Now, it's probably going to be covered anyway on the side but this is where my um signature or my my signatures will live but this is where my piece um that i cut for the hidden spine this is where this is gonna live and you're not really going to see it because i thought about dyeing this orange but now that i'm looking at it i'm like how much of it are you really gonna see if i do decide to cover up these edges hmm so these are all things you have to think about before that's done. Okay, and you know what? There's really cream in the book, in the cover, and this is the part I'm looking to keep. So I think I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to lay that in there. Now, this is sort of a one-shot deal. I'm not perfect at it. It does end up being, I usually get more on this side or more on this side. I don't care. If it's going to be covered up, I don't really care. Um... But maybe if I make some indents, that might work. But if I really kind of get this in here and be like, okay, that's where I want that to live and that's where I want that to live. Hmm. Or if I put this whole piece in there. Okay, I'm just working things out in my head. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And another thing I'm going to be using is Fabri-Tac. So I'm going to peel this back. I'm going to have that sticky back. I'm going to use the three-in-one Fabri-Tac, same thing, and I'm going to get in these corners real well so that when this fabric lands in there, it's going to um, adhere. And you want to use the Fabri-Tac if you're using fabric. You can use it on paper, too. It is, like, the one I like the most. So um, let me get some paper to protect my mat. And I'm going to go ahead and... Peel that backing off. And as you can see, 
you can see that that's kind of like what they if you ever tore a book apart it's kind of what the book binding looks like all right so i'm going to and i'm gonna start just really spreading some glue on i'm not going to put it up in here as of yet it will eventually go there but i just want to get my um fabric loaded in there first And as you can see, I'm giving it a generous amount. I'm, even though this is sticky, I'm going to add some to the center too, because I really want this to stick in there. Great. Now I'm going to take, and I think I'm going to try it this way and see what happens. Just for getting it laid in there, I think might be a good idea. And you have a little bit of wiggle room. I'm gonna get that out of there real quick before. And that's kind of why I like putting the Fabri-Tac too, because once I stick it to that that um, carpet tape, there gonna be no getting it up. Mm -mm, not gonna happen. All right, so I'm going to press that in there, press it down, and then you can see I have little peekies out the edge. Kind of cool. I like that. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just going to press and press and get them edges good. And then, of course, because I'm putting this on the edges, it's going to help with that, too, when you're, con you know, constantly opening up the journal to write in it. It's going to make some edges stronger for me. Okay. All right. So once I kind of get that in there. Now I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to put the Fabri-Tac here and do my edges. And I'm gonna be a little more careful here because I don't want a bunch of it oozing out here in case I decide I just wanna leave it blank or I just wanna put a pocket because I like this paper and I'm not sure I really wanna ruin it. So, go ahead and get that in there. And then this one, I think I got it pretty even this time. This was probably maybe the best one I've, I've put in. Because I do this on the other books too, even if it's not a hidden spine. I usually do this um, center spine, I guess is what you say. Okay. So now the trick is to leave it alone. Don't touch it. Like we want to just get in there and you're like, oh, I just want to start putting my journal together. And no, you don't want to do that. Let it, let it dry. I'm going to let it dry overnight. I'm not going to play with it. I'm not going to close it. I'm going to just leave it flat. I might come in. You can see it's buckling a little bit there. I might come in and just press it down. Um, but I can always go back if I need to go back and do some touch up in here. I can, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. And we're going to let that sit. And my next step will be showing you how to put the signatures in. So my next video is going to be about how do we build the signatures and then how do we attach them to this? So I hope that you found that helpful. Like I said, there's lots of crafters out there doing this and go check them out because they know far more than I do. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.